Hi, I'm Ken Jr. and welcome to Train World TV. Here you'll find the latest and greatest in model trains. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to our channel, we're glad you're here and I invite you to click the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you'll never miss a video. Now, we'd also love to send you exclusive deals and special announcements that you won't find anywhere else. So be sure to sign up for our emails, TW text, and stay connected with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Now, you can find all the links in the description box below or trainworld.com. And without further ado, enjoy today's video. Hello and good evening, everybody, and welcome to Train World TV, another action-packed night, and uh, you know the gentleman to the, I'm not sure if it's your left or my right, but uh, next to me, Ryan Kunkel from Lionel. How you doing, Ryan? Uh, great. Uh, it's great to be back on on here with you on Train World TV, and uh, good for another another catalog review night. That's it. We always appreciate Ryan. He's like, he, he always says yes to us, no matter how many times we ask him to do a, a video, uh, a 30 second clip, uh, pictures. He's always willing and able. And uh, we appreciate that here at Train World. And uh, th so thank you very much, Ryan. And I, I appreciate you always coming out and being supportive for us. Uh, we, we likewise we appreciate everything that you guys do to help spread the word and uh, get news out of, of what we're trying to do here at Lionel. So uh, it's always always great to be on. That's awesome. So tonight, what everybody has been waiting for, uh, Lionel 2023 catalog, the flip through, and tonight we're going to talk about high end power. And last Thursday night. Uh, the two uh, young ladies, Corey and Megan, were on our show, and they did a great job talking about the traditional ready-to-roll uh, rolling stock and also some line chief engines and all the, the great, uh, I guess, novelty items that Lionel had to offer. But Ryan is here, and he will go over all the high-end stuff. And what's great about Ryan is he is a true expert in his field. He knows everything about it, um, so uh, it's it's like getting the the uh, brains behind the engines. So it, it's always a pleasure having him on as a guest. So thank you, Ryan, for being here, and uh, we're we're excited for tonight. Yeah, this is, this should be a good one. Uh, we've had a great response to the catalog so far overall. Uh, whether it's the the high end section that we're going to talk about tonight or some of the great new sets that we've got, uh, the wonderful uh, anniversaries like Disney that we have in there. Uh, there's just great stuff all through this catalog at uh, a variety of a variety of interests. And I, that's one of my, my favorite parts about this catalog. I think we really threw a wide net out there and put something in it for pretty much everybody. That's, that's right. And it, it's amazing looking at the orders um, you, you know, you, you look at the catalog once, but sometimes hearing it uh, and noticing certain things, then people are like, oh, it does that? Let me order it. So the, these shows are really great because it, it lets you know exactly what the item does or something that you just missed or glanced over. So it, it's very helpful. And we notice it in in the the sales afterwards, and and I notice it myself. I make notes if something's uh, if I miss something in the catalog. So 
it, it's always very helpful. But we have noticed that it's really spread out across the board on on pre-orders. Everyone's just grabbing uh, a, a broad vi variety of uh, items. It's not just uh, it's not only just the big boy, even right. though the big boy has done very well. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody kind of has has been throughout the whole catalog uh, purchasing. Absolutely, and and usually we, we we work together on this a little earlier in the catalog order cycle, but we're a little later this time just because of all the different shows you and I have been going to and everything else. And I think that's good because there will be some updates on a few things tonight. We've had time to get some of those questions uh, through you and and others, uh, whether it's through emails or face to face, uh, different shows. And so hopefully we can answer some questions tonight as well for people who might still be a little bit on the fence about an item or two uh, as that order deadline gets gets closer for everybody. Yes, and just so you know, there is an order deadline. Uh, I don't even know what the deadline is. My father was supposed to be on tonight. He's stuck in traffic, but there is an order deadline and our prices uh, uh, may change. So make sure you get the pre-order pricing and pre-order now if you're interested. So lock in at that low rate. Um, our pre-ordering is very simple. It's no money down. Uh, we don't charge your credit card until the item arrives and ready to ship out. Uh, so uh, de definitely take advantage of it if you can. If you hear Ryan talking about something tonight, or if you have a question on something, want to review something, Go over it and make sure you get that pre-order in. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. And put in the chat where you're from. I see a lot of people, uh, some people from New York. Great to see you. Even PA out there. Uh, last night, we had another live stream. We had people from Australia and Korea. Uh, so it's always interesting to see where everyone's from. And we appreciate all the, the, the feedback and uh, uh, everybody saying hello. So thank you, guys. And with that being said, uh, Ryan, I'll, I'll let you uh, kick it off. All right. Uh, let's see. Can you, uh, I think you have to throw up the screen there, Ken. There we go. Uh, here's our, I figure we'll, we'll jump right in with the, with the big boy. We'll sort of go uh, through the catalog and, and hit the highlights here in the first, first section. Uh, we announced the big boy back in October. So I think uh, people have had some time to, to get to know this locomotive a little bit. Uh, lots of different uh variations in the in the different locomotives and a lot of really great features on this one uh we've, we've certainly done the big boy a few times but without a doubt this is the most feature rich version that we've we've put out to date so you've got four smoke units in here stack whistle safety valve blow down steam you've got uh the three speaker stereo sound system speaker in the smoke box two in the tender for some just amazing sounds uh, for the first time, this will have the force coupler on there, which uh, adjusts those labor sounds, uh, depending on how hard the engine is working. Also, uh, will work in conjunction there with the, the depleting coal load on all of the coal-fired versions uh, that depletes as the engine moves along. Four-digit addressing for the first time. Uh, well, just, just you name it. There's so many great features in this locomotive. The nice thing about a big steam engine is you can really pack in a lot of different cool effects. And so uh, we, we just we had a lot of people reaching out saying they had missed last runs and they really wanted to see the Vision Big Boy come back. So here it is better than ever. And uh, the response on this, as you mentioned, uh, Ken, has been just really great uh, overall for this this locomotive. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, without a doubt, this Big Boy is it, it it's amazing no matter how many times a big boy is made it is still always the number one selling piece everybody needs a big boy and uh this vision line big boy has all the features all the bells and whistles all the depleting coal loads i i mean it has it all and it, it's really beautiful unbelievable and every time it is made it just Ryan and Lionel and the Lionel team takes it to a whole new level. So we're really excited to see this one. And I, I just wanted to show something real quick that uh, the Lionel team did that you guys could also check out. Um, so on our website, trainworld.com, on these individual big boy tabs, when you look into a pre-order product, Lionel created this really neat video so we have a section where you can see the actual product, but if you scroll, 
you could play the video that Lionel and uh, Ryan and their team created. So if you play this, you'll see the whole video. I don't know if you could hear it right now, but um, it, it just plays the whole video, what it does. So it's, it's a really neat video. If you haven't checked out, uh, Lionel did a great job putting that video together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing that. We like to try and uh, do different things to help people understand the product better and, uh, you know, just get, uh, get as much information out there as we can, can for folks. Without a doubt. So, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of different uh, deco schemes available on these. There are some minor detail variations between them. Uh, of course, we've got the two fantasy Greyhound schemes here as well. Uh, we did that on the Lion Master locomotive a few years ago, and people really liked it. So we thought next time we did the Vision engines, we'd, we'd bring that back. Uh, and I think those those turned out real nice. Uh, every time we talk about big boys or any sort of UP steam, there's always uh, people asking for more passenger cars. Um, and so we've done a, a good portion of their business and excursion car fleet. Uh, we still have a few more cars we can add. Uh, we've got two of them in the, the two-pack there that's a, a separate sale two-pack. Uh, that we have not done before uh, and then we also have the, the dining car and the four pack which brings back some of the more popular cars from the first run of these things way back about know, 2015 2016 or so and those are getting really hard to find and we know just like there were a lot of people who missed out on early runs of the big boy there's been a lot of people looking for the flag uh, baggage car and so forth so i thought it was a good time to, to rerun some of the the earlier uh road names and, and deco schemes on these cars as well yeah, and it, it seems like anyone who's purchasing a big boy obviously needs some passenger cars to pull it so or uh, to have it be, be pulled. But uh, beautiful paint scheme and the American flag uh, on that UP uh, car is just unbelievable. Beautiful paint scheme. Yep. Uh, All right, uh, Ryan, just one question. Sure. Uh, Kevin had a good question related to the item. Will the fantasy scheme have removable elephant ears? Uh, yes, on the the yellow the yellow stripe version there, number forty twenty four, we put the elephant ears on that one. Um, we did not put them on the forty twenty one version, uh, but they are removable. Whether you get them on that or the uh, the black forty nineteen, the prototypical variation, they're held on by magnets, so they're very easy to pop off or pop on as you wish uh, to run the locomotive. And and Robert wants some uh, auxiliary water tenders to go with them. <laughs> uh, just hang in there, Robert. Uh, we actually thought about putting those in this catalog, but I'm holding them back just a little bit. There was so much in here that uh, I actually thought, you know, we spread out the, the financial pain a little bit for those who want to get everything. Uh, you don't have to get everything all at once. But trust me, there are some ox tenders in the very near future coming for you guys. Awesome. So next up, we've got the uh, the big boy super set. Uh, and this was a fun one to put together. Uh, our sales team had a lot of fun with this. Uh, and they, they kept saying, put more in it. So, so we did. Uh, it comes with pretty much everything but the forklift to get it into your house. Uh, you've got the, the vision big boy, a, a set of vision reefers, a set of vision stock cars, a one-of-a-kind um, Freight Sounds boxcar, and the new Vision Caboose uh, at the end. So uh, worth mentioning, all the cars in this set, uh, the reefers, the stock cars, they have separate numbers from the separate sale three packs that are offered in this catalog and separate sale and separate road numbers from all the uh, cars we've done over the past oh, eight, nine years or so uh, that I could go back and find uh, numbers for. So doing, we're trying not to duplicate any road numbers here. So for those who really have large, large layouts and want to run a long string of cars, uh, you can do that without duplicating the numbers. Uh, the reefers and the stock cars, very similar uh, to the cars we've put out in the past. The, the fun new thing on the stock cars is we will have some new cheap sounds in there this time around. Uh, that was one of the big things we heard about a lot at uh, the show at Springfield. Uh, about a week or so ago, people really enjoying the stock cars. Um, we had the 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 hog cars running around on the layout there uh, mm -hmm. with the quilling pig. People got a kick out of that. Uh, so this will have the quilling sheep and uh, have lots of requests to put uh, all sorts of different animals in, in the cars going forward. So 
Uh, we'll be keeping the sound team here really busy with that uh, as a popular feature. And then the, the box car in the set is also unique. This will be the start, uh, the first in what will be a, uh, a series of cars featuring some of the Union Pacific's poster art from World War II. Uh, so it'll, it'll have a unique uh, poster on one side and then the other side where it would normally say uh, Union Pacific serves all the West. Uh, we're changing that slightly, slightly a little bit. And the wording will be uh, serves all our best uh, over on the other side of the car. So for those looking to start that series or complete that series, this is the, the first in what will be an, a, a multi-catalog run of those special boxcars uh, to go along with that. Uh, and then the Vision Caboose is an all new, new piece. We haven't done a talking caboose uh, since the TMCC days. And so this will uh, work with the locomotives. You'll have the, the crew dialogue and so forth. Uh, freight sounds in motion. Uh, there'll even be a little air whistle on there for your backup moves. Uh, lighted marker lights, of course, uh, an electrocoupler. And one of the features I think is really cool is we're putting the, the track IR on this as well. So if you're using the IR sensor tracks, you could use the caboose at the tail end of the train to trigger uh, any number of functions that you'd like to program in uh, to your layout. So if you want to, you know, for example, throw a switch behind the train uh, to line the siding for the, for the next train out of the yard or something like that, you could very easily do that um, using the, the, the IR sensor on the the cabooses. Ken, you're muted. Did I lose you? Sorry about that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Kevin, also a couple of questions coming in. Uh, Kevin wanted to know if any elephant ears on the set and uh, what happened with the to the radiator handrails. Okay, uh, so on the on the locomotive in the set, there will not be elephant ears. Uh, the UP only put those on the 4019 in real life and only for a very short period of time. Uh, the radiators on the handrails, uh, the aftercoolers, I think is what we're, we're talking about there. Those, those vary from SKU to SKU. Uh, 4008 in the set has them. Uh, a lot of the other locomotives that we cataloged, uh, we looked at earlier, do not. Uh, the last five big boys that were delivered did not have these on them, did not have the high uh, after coolers at all from construction uh, date. Uh, the earlier 19 uh, had them, but they were later relocated uh, in the mid uh, second half of the 1940s. They were relocated uh, underneath the footboards there on the pilot, uh, pilot deck. So uh, it's a detail that we've changed from engine to engine, depending on the era that it, it represents. Perfect. And uh, Kevin, you, you asked the, if, where you could find the details. If you go to our website, trainworld.com, if you type in the item number of the, uh, the big boy superset, um, we do have it listed and uh, we do list out all the details for more information on that. Um, Anthony wants to know how many pre-orders do we have for the big boy set? Um, we, we actually do have quite a few, so I, I won't reveal the number, but um, you know, people want it. it it's amazing. It's, um, it, it's a big set. It, <laughs> it, I, I wonder how, how big the set actually is going to be. I, it, because shipping is going to be pretty crazy. I, hopefully UPS could actually deliver the set. So, um, we, we got our, uh, fingers crossed on that one, but we'll do our best to ensure a, a safe, safe, smooth delivery. And, um, uh, Kenneth, Kenneth also asked, uh, why not a camera in the theater car pack? Uh, mostly just to sort of, you know, we've done those in the past. Um, okay. We didn't want to, we just, we didn't put them in this one, uh, especially okay. with a two pack, keeping the cost a little bit more in line. So we didn't have the camera in there this time around. Uh, they'll, they'll come back again at some point, however. Uh, and there's still a lot of those camera cars out there. If you're, if you're looking for one, I'm sure you'll, you'll be able to trap one down. Uh, and, we'll, we will make sure that we put this in a good heavy box uh, and so that it does its best to survive uh, shipping. Uh, the nice thing about this is I don't think the, the shippers will be able to toss it to the front of the truck because it won't fly that far. Uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we did just ship the, uh, the rocket booster train yeah. uh, from the la uh, this catalog last year, and it actually had more rolling stock in it than this. Uh, the big boy will probably make this a heavier set than that one, but... Uh, that came in, in quite a sturdy and impressive box as well uh, that uh, is, is quite the, the, the showstopper when you see that uh, sitting underneath the Christmas tree, I'm sure. 
Yes, and that set came in, and I, I couldn't believe the amount of people that ordered that set. It, it was like unbelievable, and th that's got to be the biggest Lionel box set that's ever shipped so far. I, I think I couldn't believe the size of that thing. Yeah, I, I, th I don't know that we could have ever shipped anything bigger than that. I mean, <laughs> maybe in, in uh, pre-war days when everything was in a wooden crate and surrounded by, uh, you know, straw and whatnot, but wow that that set does sort of take you back when you see it but yeah. if you know you're gonna if you're starting out and you know you're gonna build a whole train and you want to do it this is a great way to just jump all in and, and get it all in one package and and know that you've got everything you need that's right and uh just to throw back to the lionel post-war days there was uh you know lionel made i i forgot what year it is but the 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 hudson set the famous hudson set and it was like the largest lionel train set it came with the zw and that set box was massive back then but now lionel has doubled that in 2023 on that the new set box so who knows one day it may be a co collector's item <laughs> on the biggest set box item <laughs> yeah certainly certainly we, we keep getting bigger and better and uh you know we've noticed over the past few years some of these big sets have been consistently really good sellers. And so uh, why not? Perfect. And uh, I did see uh, a question on when the, the pre-orders will be built. Um, all the engines will be built at different days, but for the big boys, do you have a estimated production? I don't, I'm glad you brought that up. I saw that question and, and wanted to touch on that too. So uh, for the most part, all the locomotives that we're gonna see um, in this, in what we're talking about today are a build the order locomotive. Even the things that aren't listed as build to order, we, we do get our orders in and then base the production quantity uh, off of what we see. We, we produce a little more overage on those, but you know, again, if, if we have a, a strong run of something, we order more. If it's if it's a lower seller, we are, we are a little bit more conservative. We will get gather all, all the orders from Train World and all of our other dealers around the country uh, at the end of February. And then the first week in March, we'll be sending our or, all all of our collective orders over to the factories uh, so that they can uh, begin the production process. Once they get those orders, it usually takes about a week or two uh, for us to get schedules back from them all, review them, uh, make some adjustments if we can, uh, and then we'll update our shipping schedule and, and let people have a better idea of when things are coming. Our goal is for everything in this catalog to deliver to you before the end of the year this year. There are always one or two pieces that don't quite make the year. Some things might be here as early as August or September. Some things might be here the second half of December. Um, I would suspect for the big boys, we're, we're, we've got the engineering done on this. We've got the samples done, the tooling's done. Everything is ready to go on these big boys. So I don't see any issue with them making the year. It's, it'll just be up to the factory when they want to slide them into the production calendar, whether it's you know, late summer or early fall. Uh, and that can make a, a bit of a difference in when you'll see them um, at Train World and then uh, on your doorstep. Uh, and a big part of that will will depend on how many orders we get because you know there's factory capacity and uh, you, you can only build so many uh, locomotives at a time. And it's sort of a bit of a jigsaw puzzle for them to figure out uh, what's going to fit in best and, and where where we sit. But I don't see any reason why these locomotives at this point would be uh, anything that would miss the year. Our goal is certainly to have these to you in time for Christmas 2023. Beautiful. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, we've talked about the Vision Reefers in the set. We also have them available separately. Uh, all of these three packs come with one car with all of the sounds, uh, two cars that are nicely detailed. The sound cars have three different stop scenarios. So you stop to uh, ice the car, to load the car, uh, and to unload the car. Um, you get those different um, loading and unloading scenarios as you roll along. And then when the car is in motion, you get the freight sounds, the clickety clacks, the squeal of the wheels and so forth. So these are a whole lot of fun. Uh, they're always a, a great seller for us. We've done Santa Fe and PFE numerous times. Fruit Growers Express and Great Northern, this will be the first time we've done those in the Vision series. Um, so those will add a little bit more color uh, in there. Uh, with the Santa Fe cars, uh, we do have the listing of what cars got what names, so I always do some research and double check myself to make sure we're matching the, the correct train names on the correct number series of the cars and not repeating ourselves. 
Uh, and that goes for some of the other little detail differences and deco differences on the cars as well. Uh, so we, we do our best to try and get those um, as right as we can for you. Really nicely detailed cars and uh, a lot of fun in, in all of these. Perfect. And uh, before we move on to the next engine, um, there, there was a question about Legacy, um, I'm sorry, uh, Base 3. Not sure, sure uh, if you want to bring up the status or uh, when they'll be delivered. Sure. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We're, we're making steady progress on that uh, every day here. It's our top priority in the engineering department uh, to get that not only completed, but uh, to get it really done right. And uh, we're making some great steps on that. Uh, right now, things are looking like a um, probably early fall or, or mid fall delivery. Uh, we're saying late Q3, early Q4 uh, delivery time frame on that. Uh, the long lead time components that we needed to order are all on order. Uh, we have uh, enough parts currently on order to cover the per current production and a little bit overage. So if you've got one on pre-order uh, right now, you should be fine. Uh, when they come in, you'll, you'll get one. Um, and then uh, we'll probably be putting in another order uh, by the end of this year uh, to put some more back in stock because it's been a, a great seller for us. Um, if you've seen us at some of the shows, you've seen we've had some demo samples there. Uh, it's working great. Uh, they're, they're still adding some new features to the, the cab three every time uh, I see it, which is pretty cool. Uh, Dave now has a feature in there where if you touch the, um, the, the street, the speed readout, it actually brings up the big red knob like you have on the, the cab two or the cab one. So you can just scroll it with your finger like a, a knob on the cab instead of using the, the thumb slider at the side mm -hmm. if you prefer that. Uh, so neat little things like that that are still getting uh, thrown in there as we develop it. Uh, it's going to make this a really cool uh, new item and a great new way to control your trains. And just really, this is really sort of just the beginning, right? We, we have to get the base right because we intend on making this the, uh, the standard for Lionel control uh, for the, the next generation of things. There are a lot of things we want to do and add on and develop further uh, that this will be supporting down the road. So there'll be a lot that's going into the base three that you won't really appreciate right now but we'll certainly be appreciating more and more as in years to come. That's awesome. And David, uh, he, David was asking how large is that uh, cap three base? It's not uh, that, that large. No, not that large. Yeah. It really has about the same footprint as the cab two uh, base does uh, that holds the cab two. Yeah. Um, it's very sleek, very mm -hmm. sleek, very sleek design. Uh, won't take up a lot of space. If you put it on your layout or under your layout, uh, we wanted to make it an attractive piece of the, you know, if you didn't bury it, you, you didn't look like a, a big black box in the middle of, of everything. Um, but a really nice, nice piece and a lot smaller. And that's one of the first things people say is, wow, it's not as big as I thought it was going to be. Um, it's not like the ZWL. It, uh, it's, it's small, it's light, uh, and it, it, it'll fit anywhere in your, in your train room for sure. Awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. All right. The stock cars, uh, we touched on these as well. These are our, our double deck stock cars. Um, these were used for uh, smaller cattle, uh, hogs, sheep, goats, that type of thing. Uh, and so this will be our first sheep car with uh, an all-new sound set for that. Uh, again, like the reefers, you'll have loading and unloading uh, and um, car cleaning stages on this, uh, which I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun uh, making up the sounds for that as, as we go through things. We're going to uh, roll on into the legacy section here um, with our Dreyfus Hudsons. Probably second only to the big boy, if, if that. Uh, this was, I think, one of the biggest splashes of news coming out of the, the catalog. And Ken, I'm sure it's been a hit for you guys up in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody uh, loves that paint scheme. And I, I tell you, it's pretty close to the big boy. A lot of people pre-ordering this. And this uh, the darker paint scheme is actually really sleek looking too. Yeah, that's our our what if fantasy scheme for this locomotive. Um, you know, the real ones didn't keep their streamlining very long. It's it's kind of amazing when you think of how iconic this locomotive is, how short lived it really was on the on the New York Central. Uh, but we thought, well, what if it had stuck around a little bit longer and they reversed the colors to match the passenger trains as the as the cars went from a, a light gray with dark striping to a dark gray with a light stripe around the windows. 
uh, if the locomotive would change to match like the diesels did. Uh, and that was our inspiration behind that one. And I think it's a, a pretty cool looking uh, design. Uh, we've got a few other fantasy ideas uh, in the back of our mind for, for future runs of these as well. But uh, that was a neat one to start out, out this run with. Very nice. And uh, these two have a lot of different uh, details depending on the locomotive. Really, no two of these are exactly the same. Uh, you've got uh, two different style drive wheels. You've got different uh, levels of removable stream uh, of streamlining on the, the locomotives. Uh, as these went along, bits and pieces of them started getting pulled off for easier maintenance. So if you look closely at the images here in the catalog, you'll see some of that uh, locomotives that have, for example, the, the pilot shield removed over the coupler or over the air compressors or the firebox. Uh, and we matched that to, to prototype photos so that we could get that detail correct. Biggest difference, uh, the early versions have the streamlined tender. Some of the later versions have the PT tender, uh, which is almost as big as the locomotive itself. Uh, we introduced uh, the feature with the Vision Line Niagara several years ago of the water scoop, uh, uh, water uh, jet effect on these with the steam, uh, which is a really cool one. Uh, and so these carry that uh, as well, where, where you see the, the larger PT tender. Um, so we've, we've done a lot of uh, different road number specific details on these uh, to really capture the full full span of the, the J3A uh, in the streamlining. There are a few paint scheme and variations we haven't done yet. Don't worry, we'll get to them uh, down the road. But I wanted to spread it out a little bit so people uh, could, could pick and choose a little bit, bit more on these. Uh, but really excited about this. Of course, it's uh, pretty much all new tooling uh, for the locomotive and the 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 streamlined tender. Uh, this isn't uh, former MTH tooling. This is tooling that we designed and, and redesigned and, and rebuilt ourselves uh, to use uh, some of the core pieces that we already had from our existing J3 uh, and so forth, and to really capture all the details that we wanted to, to capture and build it the way we wanted to build it. So this one's been in the, in the works for probably about two or three years now behind the scenes, and it's, it's nice to see it finally getting the light of day. Uh, I know this is a locomotive a lot of people have been asking to see come back in the lineup for uh, well over a decade now. Uh, beautiful looking and tons of pre-orders on this. This is definitely uh, probably the second uh, most amount of pre-orders uh, other than the big boy. It was mm -hmm. the big boy, uh, this and and the Mickey hand car. But I mean, that's a different uh, uh, price point. But for the high end, it's uh, that and the Dreyfus for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and then we've, we've, we do have the passenger cars to go with it. Um, we're tooling up a new uh, railway post office car, new diner, and new observation car to uh, accurately reflect the 1938 uh, 20th Century Limited. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, New York Central guys ask me if we'll do the 1940 variation of the deco scheme, and yes, we will. Uh, again, uh, thought it would be better to bring out one, one year's worth of train first, and then we'll bring out the next and the locomotives to match uh, in the not, not too, too distant future. I promise you won't have to wait 20 years again to see these back in the catalog uh, at the very least. Um, so, uh, But some, some new tooling on these passenger cars uh, to match the, the 20th century. You've got the four pack uh, of uh, cars with the RPO and the observation and two sleepers, uh, another two pack of sleepers, and then the two pack of uh, station sound diners, one of which will have the sound and the other will have the interior details, of course. Uh, we didn't, didn't think you would need two sound cars with this, uh, but the 20th century always ran with two diners. Uh, so why not put two diners on, on your train? Uh, and this saves you having to buy two uh, sound equipped station sound diners to get the, the right looking consist. And uh, so what's the radius cool again, Ryan? A lot of people asking questions on the radius. Great question. So the, the passenger cars are 054. The locomotive okay. is, we're gonna rate that at 060. It says 072 okay. in the catalog, but 060 with either tender, uh, you'll be okay. able to, to do 060. Uh, I cannot promise that we'll do 054. Uh, we couldn't uh, test everything on that the way we would, would like to to guarantee 054, uh, but we feel very comfortable that 060 will not be a problem for, for these locomotives. So that may help a lot of people out. Beautiful. And ju just so people know, um, the, the two top pre-orders was the, the Fantasy Paint Scheme and also 5452. Um, so those two right. were, were the top uh, winners so far. 
That's great. One other cool feature that we just confirmed in the design today, and this is something a lot of people asked about. I'll be honest, I don't know if it's a prototypical feature or not, um, but a lot of people wanted it. And so we we talked to the design team and had them add it. And that is that there will be three uh, LED running lights, uh, one over each drive wheel on these locomotives uh, to illuminate the drivers. Oh, really? Yeah, so okay. something we heard a lot of requests for and uh, we looked into it and said, yeah, we, we can make that happen. So um, has that uh, ever been done before for you guys? Uh, you know, I've heard various reports of whether or not it was done on the last run of Hudson's we did uh, of these years and years and years ago. Um, but huh. uh, we, we have them on the big boy. We have them on a few other locomotives. It's a, it's a lighting feature we've done before. Okay. Uh, but it wasn't originally in the design here for these. Um, again, I can't really confirm whether or not it was a prototype design feature. And if someone knows please let me know. I'm always trying to add to my library of useless historical knowledge to <laughs> board guests with the dinner parties. But um, this one, you know, again, we had a lot of requests for it. And so, so why not? So you're hearing about it here on, on train world TV first, that uh, that has now been added to the, the J three Hudson's and that'll be on all the different variations. It, and uh, ZA actually had an interesting point. Is there a reason why you didn't make this the vision line announcement? Because it's kind of like a vision line engine, pretty much. It, it is kind of like a vision line announcement with all new tooling and everything. Um, we wanted to go with the, the big boy this year uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, we do our, our all new vision line engine every other year. Uh, and this was sort of the in-between years for that, which is why we brought back the big boy, even though it's certainly not just a re-hit because we've, we've made a lot of upgrades to it. Um, we've, we had a big vision engine with all new tooling the year before with the NNW Class A. Uh, and those just delivered last December. And then uh, probably towards the end of this year, uh, we won't wait until January to see one like we did this time. We'll we'll announce a little bit early. You'll get a, a peak of what's coming in Vision Line for 2024, which will be an, a, a locomotive we have never done before. Um, and so with the, the features that this was, had going into it, uh, it didn't really have any new operational features. Um, and so we thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll We'll just bring it out and the fact that it's it's a legacy j3 so it's it's uh it stands at the top of the mountain uh, already by itself right this is yeah. one of those iconic locomotives that everybody knows even if you don't know trains you know the dreyfus hudson's um and you know everyone wants one for their collection mm -hmm. so we felt that uh, vision banner or not this one this one didn't need that extra extra help to to make it a, a bestseller and uh, that's that's why you see it the way you see it. And Ryan, Chris had a a good point. Ryan, will this gray or, or uh, question? Uh, Ryan, will this gray version match the twenty one inch cars from twenty twenty uh, twenty twenty? Uh, the grays should be very similar uh, on okay. that. When when we go back a few years in production, it's always hard to say whether there'll be an exact match or not. Um, uh, but I suspect we'll be will be very close. I've been working with a lot of people to try and get the colors on this as correct as possible. Okay. Um, and, and with the New York Central Grays, there seems to be a fair amount of consensus that there is no consensus on what proper New York Central Gray is. Um, Sounds like but, most uh, of <laughs> Yeah, but, um, but we, we've worked with, I'm working with a number of people right now to make sure that we get things as accurate as, as possible. We do have New York Central paint diagrams to get uh, the striping widths and so forth correct. Uh, on these uh, and get those details uh, spot on. Um, but uh, one thing I, I, I can I can tell you that the locomotive and the passenger cars here will be uh, color matched as best as we can. Uh, but matching it to anything else uh, from prior runs, especially from other companies, uh, your mileage may well vary on that one. Yeah. And and Chris, I would actually recommend that you you just sell what you have now and just repurchase from us for the new set, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's shameless. Uh, yeah. that shameless. <laughs> yes, right, he goes, rest in peace in my wallet. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, well, let's move on to something a little smaller, uh, the Russian decapods. Uh, I think it, it's funny, you know, up until about two years ago, Lionel didn't have a single 210 in our catalog and, uh, of tooling, and now we've got three. Uh, so, and two of them in this catalog. 
this is definitely the smaller of the two. Uh, the Russians were a unique engine with a lot of fun history and well traveled over uh, over the U.S. So lots of great road name options on these, um, and we, we've explored some here that have not been done uh, previously um, on this tooling. This is tooling that we did pick up from MTH. Uh, we're making quite a number of changes to it. Um, point out a couple of the more unique features of this locomotive and explain some of the reasons behind it. You'll notice the catalog calls out the wired tether. Uh, there was no room in the boiler to put our electronics. So the uh, electronics are all in the tender on this locomotive, which really didn't leave us much of a choice in terms of where we, uh, of, of whether or not we could do a wireless draw bar. Um, but having said that, it does give also the advantage on a small engine like this that we have pickup on both the tender and the locomotive. So you've got a smaller engine with a great wheelbase for electrical pickup, which will help when you're doing slow operations uh, and if you have dirty track and, and things like that. Uh, so we're, we're actually see that as an adva advantage to a, a great extent on here. Uh, it also gave us enough room while we couldn't cram in a second smoke unit for whistle scheme. It did give us room to put in the swinging bell feature. Uh, which is always really popular uh, on these models. And you'll see that on all of the locomotives except for Frisco 1630. Uh, and it's not because we have anything against the 1630, but with that uh, bell out in front of the smoke box like that, uh, just no way we could get a, uh, a magnet in there to control the, the swinging uh, bell armature. Um, the, uh, the 1630, for those who've been asking, uh, we have it in contact with IRM and uh, we're working on trying to make some arrangements to get a team out there to record actual sounds uh, and uh, make this one as, as, as great as we possibly can. Now, that engine has not really been done right in, uh, in O scale like this uh, to this point. So uh, we're going to do our best to do her justice uh, here in the catalog. Uh, so you'll see some different detail variations on that um, version. Uh, some of the other detail variations include the uh, early style railings on the Reading and USA units, uh, tenders with or without the doghouse or with or without the long porch uh, on the back that these uh, were originally delivered with. Uh, a lot of railroads cut those off. Uh, headlight positions and uh, styles vary from engine to engine. So lots of, uh, lots of road uh, name specific details on these that we've matched as best as possible to uh, prototype photos. And uh, Rai, a good question on the Erie. Is that uh, Russian iron blue or? Yes, that'll be a Russia iron blue. Uh, it'll be the same as uh, you'll see on the camel back in a few pages here as well. Uh, we've, we've hit a, a color uh, on that that we really like uh, to, to match that, that blue. It's not as bright uh, a blue as a lot of model train manufacturers have made it in the past. Uh, but it's... It, uh, and it may actually still be, in my opinion, a little bit too blue for Russia Iron Blue, but it has such a pleasing color to it yeah. that uh, it, it looks right and it looks really nice. Uh, it's just a really classy locomotive when you combine it with the, the white trim on the running boards and the tires and um, you know the, the bold lettering on the cab and so forth. Um, another thing that we'll be doing on some of these locomotives, and it's hard to pick up in the uh, catalog art, but some of the graphite that we'll be using will be a darker, uh, almost black uh, graphite that we've seen on some of these engines. Uh, and the Erie, I think, is one that falls into that into that camp uh, with a really nice dark uh, graphite that actually makes that blue pop even more uh, on the model. Very neat. Yeah, yeah I, I think these are that this kind of engine in the catalog where everybody focused on the big boy and Dreyfus. Mm -hmm. But once these come out, people are going to gobble them up and it's going to be very limited quantity. Yeah. Yeah. This is really, it really is a beautiful uh, locomotive uh, and it's not too big. So if you have a smaller layout, uh, it's going to look really right at home pulling a short train around a, a small, smaller layout. These will do an 042 curve. Uh, again, a lot of that's because we really tried to pull in the tender so you didn't have a huge gap there to make it look, look silly. Um, and uh, just a, a nice locomotive uh, all around. Uh, one other note for the Reading guys out who might be watching there. Yeah, the number in the catalog is a, a juxtaposition uh, that will be delivered as number 1126 uh, when it when it comes out, which is uh, one of the correct three numbers for the uh, Philly and Reading uh, decapods. Awesome. But uh, if you want a bigger uh, bigger decapod, then we've got the uh, the Pensy I one. Uh, this is one of my 
personal favorite engines of all time and just finally glad to see it in the Lionel catalog. I've been wanting to do this locomotive for 10 years now. Uh, and uh, so we'll, we'll make sure we do it justice. Uh, we'll have whistle steam, of course. Uh, we've got two different front end, end variations, the pre-war and post-war um, variations in the front end and two different tender variations, the, the small and modest uh, uh, four axle tender and then the ridiculously large uh, uh, coast to coast tender off of the queues. Uh, and by the time those tenders got on the on these locomotives, uh, they were in the, the post-war years. So even though some of the locomotives hadn't been modernized on the front end yet, uh, the painting and lettering on them is styled in that post-war style uh, with the dark green cab roof and tender deck. Uh, so that's why you see that uh, variation difference there. But uh, each of these four variations comes in two road, two road numbers each. Uh, and the Pensy love to double or triple head these monsters. So, uh, you know, feel free to do the same on your, your model railroad. Uh, Pensy guys, uh, you know, you need a bunch of these. The Pensy had 600. So, you know, do your best to catch up. And for that tender, I mean, that's gigantic. What kind of curves would is that going to run on? Is, uh, we is it different listed, per engine? Like no, per no, we have both listed at 054. Uh, and again, a lot of it's because of the drawbar itself and the spacing uh, as much as the length of the tender. Uh, the tender, just as in real life, uh, was longer and heavier than the locomotive. Um, uh, with, with these engines, though, it gave them about uh, three to four times the, the running range with, with coal and water that the other tanks had. So for the road engines, a lot of them got big tenders, whether it was the... Uh, the ones that we have here were some of the slightly smaller variations of these, which you very likely will see in future I-1 runs uh, from us uh, in the Lionel catalog. Uh, they were your over-the-road engines for the most part. Um, helper engines, yard engines, because these were used a lot in hump yards for, for pushers uh, or used on the curve uh, as a helper engine. They weren't as far away from uh, fuel and water as, as long, so uh, a lot of them kept their shorter, shorter tenders. Uh, but it was the Pensy, and there were 600 of these things, and there's an exception to every rule. Uh, forget that whole standard Railroad of the World thing. Uh, everything was uh, unique. So mix and match them to your heart's content, because the Railroad certainly did. Uh, and uh, you'll, you'll find pictures of the same engine with multiple tenders on it at various points in its career, too, of course. So uh, you, can, you can have a lot of fun with these if you're a Pensy guy. Without a doubt. All right. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Santa Fe Northerns. Uh, these are the big Northerns, the 2900 series uh, locomotives. Uh, we've done the 3750 class uh, in years past, and we borrowed some of our fantasy schemes from some of those runs. Uh, but there's there's really a, a big difference between a 3750 class and a, a 2900 class uh, 484. They, these are much larger locomotives. Uh, in fact, they share the same boiler as the 2104s that we released uh, last year. So if they look kind of similar, it's because the prototypes were identical from the running boards up. Uh, it was just a matter of changing out the, the driver sets. Uh, so a really big locomotive, almost as long as the big boy. Um, uh, we have these in the catalog mistakenly shown as an 031 curve. These will definitely not do an 031 curve. <laughs> these are in your 072 uh, ballpark. Uh, as I said, they're, they're, they're quite enormous. Um, but a really cool locomotive, of course, you've got the 2926, which is still uh, in operation today. So we did that in both a uh, more glossy and polished uh, excursion version, as well as a more in-service version. Uh, we had a lot of requests uh, to do something similar after the Class A's came out uh, with the 1218. And so we thought we would introduce that here on these. And uh, as we go forward with some of the popular en excursion engines, something you'll probably see more of in the catalog. Those who like a more in service weathered, not weathered, but uh, toned down look, and those who really like to see them all polished and glitzed as they are today, and and, and rightfully should be uh, for service over the road. So polished rods, a brighter silver smoke box, uh, and a glossier finish on the excursion version versus the uh, the regular uh, other skew of the 2926. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have the, the 2912 and the 2903, which I believe are the other two survivors uh, of the class as well. Uh, a new variation of the Santa Fe war bonnet. Uh, we've done some black bonnet schemes, but this one with the silver tank, I think is going to look really cool on, on the point of your passenger trains. And then a uh, throwback to the blue goose, uh, which of course was the Hudson, uh, but um, 
actually this is they have a different engine too but just a really great color scheme on these we had a lot of requests to do some matching passenger cars so i think you'll see something like that in the in the not too distant future as well and and rye uh any plans of doing passenger cars for the blue goose paint scheme yeah as, as i just mentioned down the road i think we probably will we've got a lot of requests for that because uh we've done two engines like that now and it's it's such a cool paint scheme so Okay. Uh, I think you'll definitely see something in the not, not too distant future. It's on my it's on my hit list. Okay, cool. And then last but not least in the in the catalog for steam, we have a return of the Camelbacks. Uh, this is a nice smaller engine that uh, comes at a, a lower price point than some of the other steam locomotives, but still gives you uh, all of the most popular legacy bells and whistles, uh, including whistle steam. Uh, in this engine and the last run of these that we did was a huge success we had a lot of uh, a lot of surprisingly large orders for them uh, several uh, people did custom uh, decorations on them and so we thought we would bring them back for another run with a few new deco schemes that we hadn't done before um, and and especially trying to introduce some color on some of these as well uh, we've got the russia iron again on the erie uh, the Atlantic City Railroad uh, is borrowed from an earlier um, Camelback uh, engine prototype, but has a, a dark green tender, um, sort of a red oxide cab, uh, bluish boiler, uh, and then had some bright red trim on the cylinders and pilot and the side rods. So uh, really neat looking locomotive um, that would look sharp pulling some um, 19th century wood coaches or early uh, steel heavyweight cars. Uh, around the layout, uh, and then a different variation on the the Pennsylvania uh, deco scheme that would be really time appropriate for for this uh, vintage of the era of this locomotive, uh, with a dark gray boiler and um, dark green cab and trim and, and tender and so forth. Uh, so I think those are going to be some real showstoppers. Uh, and then we have a great looking uh, Christmas engine uh, towards the back of the catalog. We'll probably touch on tonight too, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, I think the Atlantic City is just unbelievable. I, I saw that in the catalog. I thought that was the coolest engine out there. I, I really don't recall any Atlantic City looking like that in O scale ever produced before. I thought it's de definitely something unique and different and caught my eye for sure. Yeah, I think that one's going to be a, a leader in, in these just because of the colors. Yeah. And and Atlantic City, I I mean, it's a well known area, you know, sure. in the Northeast. It's everybody knows Atlantic City, so it, it's pretty uh, unique, and it br brings me that back in time to like the Roaring Twenties or Casino days. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, let's get into some diesels here. There we go. Whoop. Getting some delay. There we are. Uh, first up, we've got E8s and E9s. Um, got a couple of different paint schemes here. Um, Amtrak and the so-called Bloody Nose uh, paint scheme has been one I've heard a lot, a lot about. A lot of people are excited to see this one. Um, what's neat on here is there are a lot of little deco differences and detail differences between the two units uh, to match prototype photos. Uh, you'll see, like, for example... Uh, the 410 and the 422 have a little bit of a different style on the number there at the back of the, the, the locomotive. These both have the snowplow pilots. 410 has a Mars light. 4, 422 has the warning light on top. Uh, 422 also has the icebreaker bars uh, and some other different rooftop details uh, that make it stand out quite nicely uh, from the other unit. Uh, Southern Pacific, you know, we've, we've done daylights a plenty, uh, but the SPZ units wore the bloody nose scheme on these uh, a lot longer than they did the daylight scheme. So we wanted to do that. Uh, Southern in the tuxedo. And then I guess love it or leave it, the New York Central in the jade green, uh, which was an experiment that was was not repeated uh, on this pair of units, but uh, very colorful and uh, and kind of unique. So if you're a New York Central guy, uh, it's probably one you, you want to have in your collection for sure. Very neat. Yeah. And, and these all come, as we've done with our E-units uh, for the past several catalogs, both engines are powered, both have uh, full lights and uh, smoke features. The lead unit has sound, the second unit does not. Another pair and another great uh, 
paint scheme are the AC and W's. Um, these guys are just down the road from us. They're less than a two hour drive from uh, Lionel headquarters. And so we, we've met up with them uh, on numerous occasions over the past uh, year or so with the F units that we delivered last year and then uh, doing some planning for the upcoming convention here with the LCCA this summer. Uh, and as we were working with them, they had acquired some uh, more E units and were getting ready to paint them. So uh, we were getting their paint, paint diagrams and paint ideas on the locomotives as they were doing it uh, so that we could make the catalog uh, and the product art accurate to the locomotives. It, it's, it's certainly the freshest paint scheme that we have ever done uh, on a model train um, for, for this, these locomotives. But those who saw the uh, F7s that delivered last year, you know how wonderful this, these colors are, the um, magenta and the, uh, the gold color, yellow gold color on these just absolutely uh, striking. Uh, so we've got a few additional cars as well to go with them. We had a lot of requests for more cars after the F units came out. We've got the full length dome car. We've got a, a two unit station sounds diner. Uh, and we're going to be getting uh, some of the folks at the ACNW to record uh, the dialogue uh, for those as well. So give it again that extra little little touch of uh, of realism uh, that we like to do whenever we can on these. Uh, so they've been been a, a wonderful railroad to work with, and their equipment is top notch and beautiful. Um, and I'm glad to see a lot of people really responding to it to it in the catalog. Yeah, yeah, it's funny, uh, Rick. I was actually just going to talk about this. Um, so, so this came out in, I, I think it was last year's catalog or, uh, the, the most recent, uh, previous catalog mm -hmm. and seeing this paint scheme, I've never seen it before. You know, I'm not from, uh, uh, Carolina area, so I, I haven't seen this train before, but this paint, paint scheme just jumps out the page. I was like, wow, that's real radical. It's different. It's unique. And we weren't sure where it was going to go. And once it came in, I mean, people were just going like crazy ordering. I had to order from three different distributors to 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 buy whatever they had to 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 get whatever they had to to fulfill demand. I mean, it was crazy. Um, mm -hmm. there were there was a lot of interest on these. I think just because it was something so unique, something different, mm -hmm. uh, and I quite honestly, I didn't think that you guys would run it again because or run a, a, another paint scheme in a diff different unit again, mm -hmm. because it was just something so unique. I figured it was a one-off and, you know, nobody would ever see, really see that, that paint scheme. But I guess because it did so well that, you know, it, it, people want it. It's, it's a, a cool looking paint scheme and, and looking at it on the engine, like, uh, you know, it's one thing in the pictures, but as we all know, looking at, you know, in real life mm -hmm. person, you, you go to that hobby shop and you, you see it on display and the colors were just dynamite. You guys really did a great job with the, the actual engine. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really did uh, something looking beautiful. Yeah, this is this is one of those paint schemes that you just simply cannot render and do justice in a printed or, or digital catalog. You just can't. And uh, all thanks goes to the, the folks at the railroad for providing us uh, with, with paint chips to make this, this possible because we, the color was important to them and we knew it was also important to getting the train right. And so when I, when I asked them for a paint chip, they said, well, sure, we can make something up for you. And usually we get like a little, you know, one inch by one inch card or something like that that we send to the, the factory. No, no, we, we had like one foot by one foot metal plates with clear coated and, and the deep richness. And they said, here, this is what we got to get to. Yeah. And having that made all the difference. Cause I don't think we could have ever come, come close with it without that help. Um, and it does definitely have a, a metallic uh, sparkle to it in the model paint uh, finish, which is just what you see on the real locomotives. Uh, mm -hmm. And they have a, a beautiful, uh, their, their regular service freight engines are a really beautiful uh, shade of green uh, with similar yeah, graphics. Chris was nice asking dark, about that, green. if you're going to uh, do some freight cars as well. And a lot of people asking for B units. Yeah, so definitely some AC and W uh, freight power uh, on the horizon. Uh, no E8 or E9 B units in the, in the running right now. Um, it's, it's one we get some requests for, but so few railroads had them. 
uh, that it's a, it's a big tooling spend. So down the road, though, it, it's, it's a good possibility since some of the roads that did have them were fairly popular, like Union Pacific. And, and just an announcement, Ken Sr. has joined us. Uh, oh, boy. Now we're going off the rails. From, uh, from, from, the, traffic, the, from the New York traffic. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in the Brooklyn store, and I, I was just sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic trying to get out here. But I, I apologize to everyone, and Ryan, uh, no disrespect. I just couldn't get here. Couldn't get here. That's, uh, that's all right. We we understand New York. I, I've never heard of traffic problems in New York. But if, <laughs> if you say that you were stuck in traffic, uh, you're a man of your word, and I believe you. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's hard to imagine there was any traffic in New York. <laughs> uh, can you start over from the beginning? Uh, there's a rewind feature on YouTube. You just go back and, and catch up on all that that afterwards. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll have to uh, ask my son a lot of questions now. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, I got, uh, like, I'll say re rewind like Ryan said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Let me just add that uh, in this particular paint scheme, in the uh, F9s, it was uh, people were saying, ah, it's a little too colorful. Wait till I see it. And, then, mm -hmm. and the ones who said, I'll wait till I see it. Boy, they had a tough time trying to find these engines, and they had to pay a lot more money. All right? This is going to be a two thousand dollar engine on eBay, without a doubt. It's just, uh, it, it's just a uh, a great color scheme. And uh, just a question: When, how, how old is this paint scheme? Nobody's ever made this paint scheme before. Oh, uh, the the paint scheme on the E eight is is literally as as old as the catalog itself. Um, and the F F units came out not too long before. Uh, you know, uh, that, that catalog came out, uh, maybe not a, a, real, a real end, a real end. Um, but, uh, just, a, it's, it's such an eye catcher and, uh, you know, and again, the, as, as pleasing as the, the trains are, the, the folks we've worked with at the AC and W, uh, are just as, as wonderful yeah. and, um, and, and sunny to be around. Okay. Uh, so it, it makes us happy to bring something like this to market because, you know, we 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 know more of the backstory to it, and have seen the behind the scenes, and have that extra level of appreciation. Um, mm -hmm. And so, it, it means something to us to have these uh, out there as well. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, we've got some ES forty fours here as well. Uh, always a big big seller for us, as you guys know. Uh, a variety of fantasy schemes in here. Uh, I tried to pick some of the really interesting locomotive liveries from the mid to late 1990s uh, on a lot of these units. Um, and then two for the Kansas City Southern as well, uh, which are both prototypical uh, paint schemes, of course. And then for the, the fantasy heritages, we've got uh, two road numbers of empowered and one in the super base unit for each road name. Uh, Kansas City Southern, we did a powered and a non-powered for those who may want a, a nice piece to sit on their, uh, on their mantle or just have added to your consist without uh, all the extra cost and uh, noise and so forth of a super base unit. Um, but rather than the belabor on these, I thought this might be a nice segue for you guys to, to chat about one of your uh, releases out of this catalog, which uh, is also one of the, speaking of interesting paint schemes, yeah, uh, yeah. one of the coolest ones we've done uh, in a long time. Yeah. Kenny, you want to take it or? You're muted, Ken. <laughs> Sorry right. about that. If you go to our website, trainworld.com, thank you, Ryan. Uh, you can see our main banner is the Flying Tiger ES44. Mm. And let me tell you, uh, Lionel and uh, their graphic designers and the whole team at Lionel truly are just so incredible to work with. Um, you know, he, he actually has some knowledge in the aviation field. So it, it really came out unbelievable. And I quite honestly, I, and I, I'm trying not to be biased, but I think this is probably one of the coolest engines. And I know our, our previous run was uh, just an unbelievable looking design as well. But th this is based off of an actual airplane, um, you know, the from the Flying Tigers. And, you know, it has that logo of the, the Tiger of it in the plane. And this is on the train. It's just unbelievable. 
So I, I don't know. I, I just think it, it's a, a great looking job. And I, I got to give my father credit uh, for this because he actually uh, was working with Lionel on the original army design. And uh, it, it's really be, became something just so amazing and incredible. Um, so Ken Senior, if you want to take it away from there. Well, there's uh yeah, thanks, Ken. There's two different versions to this, two different color bottoms. And the reason for the two different color bottoms is because the actual planes had different color bottoms. They um they would fly over different parts of uh uh the Alaska coast or the Alkin is it Alkenia or no, uh, that's the, uh, Alicia and I. Yeah. Alicia, 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 okay. Alicia. And then uh, the um, they would paint the color different so it would con confuse the enemy into which nationality the uh, the plane was just by changing the different colors at the bottom of the uh, plane. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, a pretty cool thing. We just announced it, I think, uh, within the last week or so, 10 days. And, and I was surprised to see the orders came in very evenly. So guys are buying both. They're not just buying one or the other. They're, they're grabbing them because they know it's a winner, it's a home run, and there isn't going to be that many made. You know, I mean, we're gonna, it's a built-to-order item. When the numbers come in, we set the we set the number, and that's going to be it. And it's mm -hmm. just gonna. You don't want to sleep on this one. You definitely want to get your order in. And, yeah. and and the graphic designer over at Lionel who who did this. I mean, I mean, we we just showed him a. a uh, a picture and uh, a, th a thought on it and he just both times hit a home run yeah, uh, yeah. He, he just knows what to do and it looks mean i i mean it 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 makes you look like you, you're uh, gonna be gunned down or something it's just <laughs> a, a, a great looking engine for yeah. sure yeah yep. I I'm a little jealous that we let you have this one and didn't put it in the catalog, to be honest. Because <laughs> um, I think it's it's a really attractive uh, deco scheme, and you know we've done a few now with the the shark teeth on the on the nose of the engine, and they've mm -hmm. been wildly po popular. But the tiger is a little bit of a neat variation on that. Uh, and as soon as uh, as soon as Ken sent this over, Steve saw it and said, "Oh, I know exactly what that is," and started giving us the whole history lesson on it. And um, you know. I, fell in love with it too. I was like, oh, this is, this is really neat. So uh, he, he, he had fun putting this one together and you know, you all, you've all seen us one here at Lionel, you know, that we, we love what we do and we have fun. And I think that's part of what makes things like this a success. When you have someone who is passionate about it uh, and really takes some joy in what they're doing, it just kicks it to that next level of uh, amazing. And that's what you're going to get out of the, out of the two of these. And then he presented you guys with the yellow and the gray, and because we weren't sure which one you'd want to go with, and we were happy. We said, you know what, let's do them both. And it looks yep. like from sales, that was the the right decision yep. as usual uh, yep. to to do it. Yeah, it it just falls into that great cool paint job type thing. And uh, you know, if you want to put me and my son on your design team, you know, no problem. You know. <laughs> I a couple of things. One, this engine is going to make James Wright switch over to O scale. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to the dark side, uh, James. It's, uh, uh, o scale is a, a great scale. So, appreciate that. And uh, Randy is asking, will they have air raid uh, sounds? Which uh, is good, good idea. Thought. So, we, we That's may up have to you guys. To, uh, we, have that, we have that sound file. Uh, if you want us to put that in there, uh, we can make that happen. That's not a problem. Uh, yeah. That's pretty that, good. That would be wild. If you could do that, uh, that that would be amazing. Uh, is, is, that, is, is that the sound file from the Billups Crossing Gate? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's similar, not quite, not quite the same, problem, but it's very similar. Yes. All right, that's a home run too. Home uh, run. Yep. <laughs> and uh, release dates on, I guess, all of the ES forty fours, Ryan. Uh, again, I won't have an exact date until we get uh, our, our all of our orders into the factories and get a, a production schedule. Um, ES forty fours are another one of those locomotives. We do them pretty much every year. So the factory doesn't have to set up a whole lot. There's not usually a lot of questions or fumbling around with these. Mm -hmm. I sus my suspicion is that these will land earlier in the production ca uh, calendar than later. Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot of it will come down to total orders and, and how we, we fit the puzzle pieces together. 
All right. All right. This, this, this is why we can't take some suggestions. Randy is asking for a commission already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So if you're going to make this engine earlier than later, it's going to be very hard for us to go back and increase the number. So, so you guys, if you're thinking about it or you know somebody interested, tell them order it now. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Yeah, uh, again, uh, unbelievable job and uh, kudos again to Lionel and uh, the designer who worked on this and especially dealing with my father. He's a uh, uh, very, he, he wants it precise and accurate all the time. So sometimes it's not easy, but uh, with something like this, he was just spot on. It was just a home run as soon as we saw it and uh, it just look, looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never dealt with anybody in the model railroad hobby who wants things to be precise and accurate and just a formula <laughs> before. So, um, you know, it's 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 something we're not really used to ever seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very yeah. cool. And uh, Dave, David, uh, you, you mentioned you can't figure out the graphic. So uh, again, this is based off of the Flying Tiger uh, airplane that was out there. So it is a tiger in the front. Uh, if you. You can't see that, but uh, yeah, yeah, the angle you got to kind of look at it from the side more than anything, <laughs> right? Right, yeah. but, uh, and, and that's kind of the tricky part of this, too, right? Is we're taking something that goes around the, the hood of a World War II aircraft, uh, not exactly the same shape and contour as an ES 44. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, GE no, has it looks great. aerodynamics on these locomotives, so. Uh, for the designers, for us to sort of merge those paint schemes takes a little bit of an art uh, in and of itself. Uh, but if you want to see some images, just uh, go on your favorite search engine and, and type in uh, World War II Flying Tigers or Aleutian Tiger, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and you'll you'll see some things come up. There are a few of these that have been restored and uh, just a really beautiful air, uh, airplane. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Great, job. Great job. Great mm. job. All right. Mm. Uh, so... Continuing to roll on in the uh, in the world of diesels, we've got our NW2 uh, back again. Uh, this is the the phase phase five variation of the NW2. It has a little bit of a different hood arrangement than uh, the engines that were on a lot of other railroads. Uh, the earlier production units, um, very similar to an SW7 or an SW uh, SW9. Uh, the the short hood, the, the front of the long hood being the probably the biggest, most obvious giveaway. But these run on our, our proven switcher design here, single motor, all axles powered. These things sound great. They run at real, real great at low speeds, fixed pilots, uh, and lots of uh, road, name, road name specific detail options on these from spark arresters to light packages and number boards and uh, handrail arrangements and so forth. Uh, so we've got a, a host of different uh, road names here, some that we had not really done much before, uh, some that are you know, perennial uh, favorites. Uh, and I think there's probably one in here. If you need a switcher for your layout, you, you just can't do better than, than this platform that we've, we've built up here on these. Mm -hmm. Another all new one to the, uh, the Lion, Lionel catalog is our GP20. Uh, this started out as a Rail King scale model from MTH that we had acquired. Uh, and because the, the body is scale proportion uh, and we really didn't have a, a scale Jeep 20 in the lineup, uh, we figured why not, uh, while we were making changes, just go all in and, and upgrade it to, to legacy uh, and, and add the separate grab irons and extra detail parts and so forth that, that separate the engines apart um, and, and so forth here. So this will be a new engine in the lineup. Uh, glad to have the, the first uh, turbocharged Jeep uh, in the Lionel catalog in, in legacy. Uh, a variety of different paint schemes uh, options here as well. Most of them uh, two numbers per road. Two different variations on the Penn Central, uh, since they were always coming up with different variations of their deco schemes. Uh, and you will see some nice detail variations as well from uh, dynamic brakes or not, uh, roof hatches, uh, you know, lighting and uh, antennae and, and so forth. The, the Kansas City Terminal has a lot of great roof detail yep. packed onto it uh, and a really great, colorful, uh, bright yellow uh, color scheme. So. Uh, even though it's not a very well-known railroad, I thought that one had a pretty good chance of, of doing well for us if you put it in the catalog, because uh, I really liked it. So I thought, well, why not? Let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Brian, after this whole thing is over, um, I want you to stay on. I just got to, I couldn't talk to you in the beginning, so I want to talk to you at the end, okay? Okay, no problem. Great. <laughs> 
All right, a few of our uh, high-end legacy sets here. Uh, the first one up is a, a Camelback uh, set for the Lehigh Valley. Really a nice turn-of-the-century um, uh, anthracite coal country uh, freight train here. You've got a, a trio of 50-ton hoppers, uh, the wood uh, boxcar, and a bobber caboose, uh, along with the great features on the Camelback that we talked about earlier on. Uh, the Lehigh Valley paint scheme was simple but classy. Uh, just mm -hmm. enough trim to make it uh, make it pop and, and give it that that little bit of style that you needed on a road that was uh, sort of all business, but uh, but still a lot of corporate pride in it. The uh, caboose on here is that going to have the same detail that the one that came out in Stroudsburg? The same interior? Yes, it will. Uh, oh. Nice heavy die cast frame, full interior detail. Uh, LED lighting, really nice, uh, nice caboose, nice model. Yeah. Anytime anybody sees that that caboose, that small uh, caboose, they buy it. it it's yep. just it, it, perfection. That caboose, it was really done nice. Very nice. All right. uh, I saw some folks jump on from Pittsburgh earlier. This one's right up your alley. Uh, Union Railroad hot metal set. Uh, you've got the, the three spacer gondolas, uh, two of the hot metal cars, and of course, the caboose. Uh, since the Union's one of the few roads still using those on pretty much every train, uh, along with the NW2 diesel. Uh, there's another uh, hot metal car available as well as a separate sale option if you'd like to pick up another one of those. Those are uh, an all die cast car, really good and heavy. Uh, and then they've got the glowing hot metal load uh, inside. And I don't know if... Um, Megan and Corey pointed out some of the other hot metal cars further back in the catalog with some of the other licensed and theme sets. We've got one for Area 51. We've got a couple of Christmas versions as well. Mm -hmm. So if you like that sort of thing, uh, check out uh, some of the further back pages in the catalog as well. We've got some neat uh, neat variations on the, the hot metal theme. Mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, the Christmas one is selling the best for me. I, 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 I don't know. I guess the guys are making a freight set with those uh, E8s also. Mm -hmm. I, I would think, and, you know, Christmas cars are always popular for us, and, uh, you know, we thought this would be kind of the world's biggest thermos of hot chocolate, so uh, mm -hmm. neat, <laughs> neat car. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Fun to do this in something other than the usual steel mill colors of black and rust and silver. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, the Iron good. Hippo set, uh, another one of my favorites. Uh, we've got the, the I-1 here. Uh, this is the, the surviving I-1 up in Hamburg, New York. Uh, you get six uh, GLA-style hopper cars here uh, and one of our Vision cabooses or cabin cars, um, an, an eight-style cabin car, the first time we've brought that into the lineup. Um, you've got, of course, if you're going to do it with all the crew talk, you got to have the, the train phone antenna on that, so we put that there. Uh, the features on these are the same as we talked about uh, about an hour ago with the Union Pacific cars, uh, just in the Pensy car body. And then all the cars in this set, as well as the two different sets of Pensy add-on hoppers that we have in this catalog, uh, you see one pair here and another pair a few pages further back. Uh, those will have a resin ore load uh, in them instead of the normal plastic coal load. Um, it, in this era, the Pensy had not built dedicated ore cars yet. The, the G38s mm -hmm. and G39s were still uh, a decade or two down the road. Uh, so they used hopper cars to carry uh, ore. And since the iron ore is much more dense uh, than, than coal, you could only load it uh, so far. Uh, and mm -hmm. so looking at it in the side view like this, you don't see the load, but there'll be a, a resin load right. down in there uh, to, to give you a nice ore train look. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to swap out the ore loads for a coal load, you could easily do so on these uh, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. A few more sets. We've got the Quad Cities Rocket. Um, the Rock Island was one of the, the last roads to hold on to independent passenger service after the creation of Amtrak. Um, at, the, at the end, the Rockets were a, a small train, and the inspiration behind this was to do a very small passenger train that you didn't need to have, um, you know, a huge layout to run a 12-car uh, passenger limited, just something nice and simple. And the, the Rockets really fit that bill. Um, a single E-unit uh, and a pair of coaches was usually the, the train of the day. Uh, food service was served out of an igloo cooler in one of the coaches. 
Um, when you start to read on these, there's a lot of great stories out of the rock uh, and it's, its last days of passenger service. Because even though it wasn't very flashy, it was still a very uh, service and family oriented, oriented railroad. Uh, and so there's lots of personal stories that attached to, you know, stopping the train at the other end of town instead of at the station because they knew that's where the one passenger in that town lived. Uh, and it saved them a, a, an extra walk or uh, at one point when there wasn't enough food on board stopping to run over to the convenience store and get sandwiches for everybody uh, you knew you were going to be late anyway so it didn't matter you you, you made up for it in service and uh, fun little stories like that that were just just neat and i, I kind of fell in love with the train myself as we researched this one uh, but that great uh, uh, bicentennial uh, era paint scheme on the locomotive is uh, is no slouch either so uh, that made it made it really easy to do. And then the Santa Fe uh, Fast Fruit Express, similar in concept to the the Vision set, just on a slightly smaller scale with the Santa Fe Northern, uh, a three pack of Vision reefers. Again, one with the sounds, two that are nicely detailed. Uh, separate uh, separate road numbers on these from the others others that we've done before. The different train names on the opposite sides of the cars, what you see pictured and the vision caboose here as well i like how you say it's on a smaller scale like that set is yeah a like it's, set. You know, it's, like a, it's a northern and, and three vision car four vision cars yeah, in here yeah. instead of you know nine or seven or whatever we had there but it, it's it's yeah that's right when this is when this was looking modest you know you catalog <laughs> pages way too long that's uh, right. yeah ryan question uh -huh. the, the caboose on the set is that the way it's supposed to face is that the, the front like that? Well, a caboose can run either way. Okay. Um, the way our tooling is set up, we have the marker lights on the, the long end with the cupola offset towards the, the front of the car. Right. Um, but if you look at the, the cabooses, you'll see a set for of uh, uh, mounts for the markers on either end of, of a caboose. Mm -hmm. Typically, they were not turned at the end of the run unless they were turning an entire train or, uh, or working the train for some reason like that. Uh, so they just picked up the flags or the marker lights at one end of the caboose, put them on the other end, and the caboose went the other direction. Okay. Yeah. They, they were not uh, limited. They weren't like a, an observation car on a passenger train, for example, where you had a, a pretty good reason to turn the car. Cabooses went where they went to and, and how they went to most of the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. We've got a, a couple of uh, a couple of freight cars uh, to touch on. We'll, we'll touch on them pretty quick. I know we're we're running a long time here, but uh, there's some neat things in here. We've got our 50 foot flat cars with the 40 foot trailer coming back. Uh, some fun private trucking line uh, companies on railroad flat cars here, and uh, my favorite's the the Lionel Play World uh, car, which of course is based off of uh, real Lionel trailers that we we found some photos of from the uh, mm -hmm. I guess late 1970s era. Uh, on the Lionel Lions flat car. So uh, for the guys who like to combine a little bit of Lionel play in your your prototype themed world, this gives you the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've, we've got some more uh, of our gondolas. This is uh, a great car with a lot of detail, uh, the drop ends and so forth, uh, and some, some wonderful new road names there as well. Uh, the grain door box cars have, have had a lot of attention, uh, surprisingly for me, out of this catalog. I had a lot of people comment on these. Uh, we hadn't done this detail variation in quite a few years. Uh, you open the the main steel door on the sides of the car, and inside you'll see a, a simulated uh, set of wood plankings, what they called a grain door, uh, and then beyond that, a, uh, a back form grain load. Uh, before covered hoppers, this was really how a lot of bulk grain was transported in the country. Uh, it was loaded and unloaded manually, uh, which was quite labor intensive, uh, but it freed up the car to be used in general service for the rest of the year. So for peak harvest time, you could pull a box car in and clean it out and then use it for grain service for a, a couple of months and then put it back into the general service pool. Mm -hmm. uh, and so from the 19, I would say 1940s into the 19, really even the 1970s, uh, in some cases up to the early 1980s in some limited areas, uh, you still saw some 40-foot boxcars uh, roaming around in this service. Uh, just a, a neat little variation on the uh, the PS1 theme that we've we've done frequently. So what what the uh, the door it's the door opens up and those are like planks of wood. Is that what that's supposed to be? Yeah, they would they would sometimes they were planks of wood. Sometimes they were in later years they would be um, more like a heavy cardboard. I think in some cases with some 
uh, mm -hmm. white wood bracing behind it. So basically, they would just go in there and uh, and, and tear out the, the the planks and try. You didn't really want to try and save them necessarily, and, and let the grain spill out, uh, and gotcha. then go in with shovels and scoop out the rest. Uh, or in, in these grain door cases, sometimes they might be knocked down bit by bit, but uh, the the force of the grain behind it is what really held the door in place uh, in the car. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Uh, cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Got some more N8 cabins here. These are the standard variety without all the Vision electronics. Uh, three different eras of Pennsylvania Railroad paint schemes, as well as a Penn Central and a Conrail here. Uh, this was the the most modern of the Pennsylvania cabooses. These were built around 1947, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, and these were the last cabooses that the Pennsylvania uh, purchased uh, or built new. Mm -hmm. And then again, some uh, some more two-bay hopper cars. The Pensy cars, as I mentioned, will have the ore loads. The others will have the coal load. Um, some, some cool road names here, mm -hmm. uh, as well as our standard of center beam cars and some new decorated schemes, uh, which are nice. Uh, you know, larger portions are not quite as small as a standard traditional freight car, uh, but not as heavily detailed as our scale cars. Uh, and so they fit in there nicely if you're building a large train and you just need some filler cars in there at a, at a lower price. Well, these work great for, for you for that. Yeah. The, the top one, interstate, it says uh, coal goes to war. So was that mm -hmm. part of like a military type trains or? It was uh, a couple of railroads did that uh, slogan during World War II. Uh, they, they put the coal goes to war uh sign on there and it served a variety of purposes it was you know it was wartime uh feel good propaganda to an extent uh, it was also a reminder that you know when you think coal trains on the railroad they were typically not the most important trains on the railroad because it's coal it's not like it's the you know a refrigerator car full of produce it's not going to expire uh, but coal was very much in need uh during the time and so those trains were also of a higher priority and it was a reminder to the crews that, you know, you needed to, to move the coal along uh, just as much as you did the, the, the tanks and munitions or, uh, or foodstuffs and, and other uh, supplies. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, all right. So this gets us into the traditional section, which I know you guys talked about um, last week with uh, the real experts behind the company, with Megan and Corey. Um, let me just... Minimize this for a second, I guess, Ken, and we'll skip ahead to some of the high-end Christmas items that uh, Megan mentioned they didn't, didn't cover in detail, but I mm -hmm. know we've had a tremendous response on them, so you probably want to talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, we'll watch you fl flip through. How about that? <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. I'll make it busy. We'll pull up this page here. All right. So we've got the... Um, O scale section of the Christmas catalog. Uh, the, the one of the biggest uh, hits that we, we've had, really honestly, was the Sleigh Bell Limited. And what I've, I've loved hearing from several people is that you know Christmas trains weren't really their thing, but when they saw this, they knew they had to have it. Uh, and I liked hearing that because I sort of fit in that camp myself. Um, it's going to be a very big loop of track around the Christmas tree this year, I think, to to run this. But. <laughs> Uh, the, the deco scheme that Sarah came up with on this one uh, is one of the nicest <laughs> Christmas trains I think we've ever done. Uh, and we've had a lot of people really remarking on, on how pretty the train is. I've already had a lot of suggestions, too, for some additional add-on cars uh, for future catalogs to stretch the train even further. So that's probably a good possibility. Uh, the locomotives have the same features we talked about earlier with the E8s. Both are powered with uh, smoke and lights. Lead unit has the sounds. Um, as, a, as a North Pole Central train should, you've got the snowplow pilot. You've got the icebreakers on the roof. Uh, so some cool little details like that to, to make it pop. Uh, we've got a, a Pullman car, uh, a couple of Pullman's coaches, observation, the RPO for uh, Santa's letters. Uh, also added in a dome car, uh, the station sounds diner. Uh, so a little bit of uh, of everything here in the in this train, and uh, just a just a neat overall beautiful uh, Christmas contest. Uh, yeah, de definitely striking. Very very good. It's uh, well done. A lot of a lot of great colors in it. Any footprints on the roof? Anything like that? Or uh, we do have some simulated snow up on the roof. Uh, yeah. On these, we didn't do didn't do the footprints, but we did do the simulated snow. You can sort of see it there on on the cars a little bit. 
uh, just to give it that extra little bit of bit of chill. And, and yep. any sounds or Christmas sounds? Or we'll definitely have uh, sound Christmas sounds in the uh, you know the station sounds diner. will have it, its announcements, and then the locomotives too. will put some special uh, announcements and things in the, in mm -hmm. the locomotives as we usually do with our Christmas engines uh, or Halloween trains and so forth. Uh, we'll put in. Uh, I think these will probably get, for example, the sleigh bells for the bell and uh, or some different horn and whistle options uh, that we like to play around with on those. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me see the uh, four pack. Yeah, Chris is very excited about this set. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of, I've heard that from a, a lot of folks. And I, I think due to your guys' points, this is going to be one of those sets that those who wait on it may be sorry they did. Uh, and, and the radius curve? Uh, 054. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the engine is 036, right? Um, I think... I have to double check on that. I think they may be a little larger than O36 too. They're a pretty big engine. Uh, they have a good swivel on them. They don't have a kinematic pilot or anything. Um, cattle, cattle they work, work a lot better on an O54, uh, and the cars yeah. are definitely rated for O54. So if you're if you're building up the match set, that's that's the way you want to go. For sure. Yeah, the engine says O36 in the catalog. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I thought it would be a lot wider on the engines, but uh, mm -hmm. but it's not. So the engines could be used on many different layouts if you don't have that O54. Mm -hmm. And and the uh, I I guess my my question would be for the uh, um, blanket. Uh, I had one. I did. Going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. blank. Okay. Okay. Um, it'll, it'll come back. Yeah. Actually, the uh, in. This Christmas, she came out with the Pacific in these uh, colors. Not exactly uh, the same scheme, but very close. So, um, so it's uh, if you want a steam engine to pull it, that's a possibility. Absolutely, yeah. we've, we've definitely done some great, uh, some other great uh, Christmas locomotives in the north, north, uh, yeah, North Pole Central paint scheme, uh, mm -hmm. and they would match. The greens and reds will match. So you have lots of uh, lots of pow power options for this uh, mm -hmm. for this contest if you want to do mix and match your power. Okay. And I, a lot of people, sorry, now I remember, a lot of people asking about delivery date and if it would be in time for Christmas. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. That is that is absolutely our goal, especially with yeah. this set. Uh, now, again, this is all new tooling on the passenger cars, so that's the only area where I could see things getting hung up a little bit. Uh, designs are complete, and we've uh, we've issued the, the PO to get the tooling started. Uh, I just have not seen a, a tooled sample yet of these cars. Um, it would make me feel a little bit more confident right now. Uh, but uh, no, I, I still don't think it will be an issue. Uh, but anytime you see new tooling, it does add that one extra little step. And by little, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, two to three months of, of agony uh, in, in waiting uh, and testing and, and confirming uh, before we move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the one area that we're, we could, could snag us a little bit on here, but uh, I'm very hopeful that uh, it will be under my tree, tree by Christmas. So uh, we'll be pushing hard on it for sure. And, and Jeff wants you to update the shipping delivery dates a, a little more often, if possible. <laughs> um, you know, we we've 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 tried to look into ways to to make that more automatic uh, on our part. Um, the truth is, once once we get the a main schedule uh, here in a, in another month or so, uh, it doesn't change too much for a little while. Uh, and then uh, by the time things really start to move around, we're getting into the third and fourth quarter and everyone's going crazy, getting <laughs> uh, just getting the stuff off the containers and, and out to people. Yeah. Um, and as with as you guys are, too, I'm sure at train world. Yeah. Uh, and so that's when things start to unravel a little bit. Uh, and that's also the period where, you know, a week or two one way or the other with the shipping schedules can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we post that next schedule in, I would say, look for it in the second half of March. Uh, those dates will probably hold pretty true for the next few months mm -hmm. uh, because things just don't don't move around too much at that point in the production schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. Generally, the projects that we're hitting are, are already moving along pretty well, and I just don't think you'll see a whole lot of movement and change. And I, and Not that there won't be some exceptions, but they, they'll be minor. Yeah, and I will say your team is actually very good with shipping things out, you know, within the, the year of the, of the catalog. It's not like... Uh, uh, some other companies where it could, could be, uh, you know, five, uh, six years, you know, waiting. So uh, that is a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, do the roofs come off easy enough to put figures on the seats? 
Uh, absolutely. Yeah. The, for the most part, these cars, the body's held onto the frame by four screws. Okay. So you take out four screws, lift the, the, the shell off. Uh, there's a plug that connects the lighting board. Uh, you could just unplug and set the shell, shell to the side so there's no wires to solder or anything like that. Um, and then you could paint and detail the interior of these cars to your heart's content. Okay. Uh, mm. As many figures and, and details as you'd like like to put in there. Uh, and then just plug in the lights again, put, put the shell back on, screw in four screws, and away you go. Okay. You mentioned that these are like a new new tooling or or just upgraded tooling or... Yes, yeah, some of these are all new tooling. Uh, we're using some of the, the diner, the RPO, and the observation car will be the same as we're using in the 20th Century Limited. Okay. Um, since it's the North Pole Central, we thought I'd keep that New York Central theme going through the whole train. Uh, and so those are all new new cars for this year. The, the dome car, the sleepers, those are existing tooling. There won't be a, a position on those, but with a deco scheme like this and a product like this, we will typically run all the cars together at the same time. Okay, cool, cool. Mm. Uh, for those Beautiful. looking for something a little smaller, perhaps, for Christmas, uh, we've also got the Fezziwig Railway, sort of a more of a, a Dickens or a Victorian era Christmas train with the camelback. Uh, darker, richer colors on this one, the, the cream and the, the dark green and uh, wine red on the locomotive, I think really turned out quite nice on this. Uh, a three-pack of freight cars, um, the box car, stock car, and the uh, wood uh, tank car. And then that bobber caboose, which, like you mentioned earlier, um, can a lot of detail, a really nice, uh, solid uh, little caboose that's uh, bound to be a, yep. be a hit. So uh, yep. whether you do all three of those pieces together as a, as a train or mix and match, uh, I think that'll be a real winner. Mm -hmm. And uh, they want to know the story behind the Fezziwig. <laughs> uh, I believe it, uh, it actually comes out of uh, one of the Dickens uh, novels. Okay. Uh, the story mm. behind all that. Is that a place or a person? I cannot remember. I spent all of my uh, literature years reading uh, railroad encyclopedias. So okay. we, we got an answer from stuff. the forum. We uh, <laughs> Anthony is saying Fezziwig was in a Disney's A Christmas Carol. He go. was Scrooge's boss. Ah. Uh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Huh, very cool. And then, as we mentioned earlier, there's our, our hot cocoa uh, vat car down there at the bottom uh, with the glowing uh, hot chocolate load in there. There's also a Polar Express version of that car, um, as well as one in the pages we skimmed over for um, Area 51. Uh, we, mm -hmm. That's been a, a fun growing theme for us as well. Very neat. Is there anything that uh, the the ladies and I haven't covered out of this, this catalog, uh, Ken's, that I need to uh, go over with you not you covered everything but uh let's kind of go over like a, a top five or top ten what what we think is going to be the the best stuff in here um the uh i could tell you by my back orders that the uh the mickey mouse hand car is like whoa it's just mm -hmm. uh anybody in the hobby is ordering that in red oh i could say red is the best color it's yep. uh, like the original one mm -hmm. uh the the Vision Line Big Boy is number two. It's just, uh, I, I even though a guy has one, he wants the latest, greatest. That's what it is. He's going to, you may see someone in the secondary market, the older ones, but uh, everybody wants this new one no matter what. And they're not going to miss the chance to buy it. They're not going to wait. They are putting their orders in right now. They don't want to miss the built the water because that, that particular engine, the price is definitely going to soar. When I was watching uh, Chris's video uh, the other day, he was talking about um, Vision Line engines, how they go up in value. And on eBay, they've been going for a thousand, two thousand more than they originally started at. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't follow eBay at all, and I, I was very impressed with that. So that was uh, pretty good. So guys are buying it from me and selling it out to the public for, for more money. That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah. The, the new Vision big boys in this catalog are cheaper than they've been going for for the twenty four yeah. versions. That's recently. right. That's right. That's right. And uh, the uh, New York Cent the uh, Century Hudson that that's a home run. The engine and the cars evenly are going out. The um, it it's just. Uh, just something that every layout, if you got 072, that's, you got to have it. You got to have it. And it's just a, a spectacular, uh, spectacular piece on that thing. And uh, Kenny, did you think of any of uh, the other hot items in there? Quite honestly, I was talking to Ryan before about this. 
they everything's kind of spread out where it's not like there's there's dead spots or lull spots it, it, everything's just kind of uh, spikes were very very good um the uh, i i guess on the traditional side we covered it on thursday but the uh Willy wonka stuff was very surprising yeah, yeah. Uh, that it did very well uh the hogwarts passenger cars were, were a home run everybody wanted th those uh i guess the the houses the other houses mm -hmm. um uh for the high end i mean the big boy and the dreyfus were uh i mean huge successes uh uh tremendous um yeah. And, so yeah yeah they, there's plenty to go around also the uh the santa fe box car that one that the uh the what is it the super chief uh box car santa fe that's the oh, anniversary the, car. The, the box car yep and it looks fantastic the writing on the roof people love that and it's right. uh that's doing very well or, and all the military girls are doing very well on the uh the uh, airplane pictures that's for ken, sure ken senior hold hold on one second okay. uh chuck brought a good point uh he thinks the ac and w will be hot but put in the chat what you guys think the best selling lionel item in the catalog whatever it is high-end uh traditional uh let us know your thoughts and we'll put it up here because i'm curious to hear what you guys think is the hottest item and then also, Ken Sr., uh, this is why we need you on these shows. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I forgot when the, the deadline is to pre-order buy. So uh, do you want to go over that? Because a lot of people are asking, and I have no idea. So I, I, I would just tell them order, but I, I want you to let them know the exact date. Well, since I came in late, I don't have my uh, papers in front of me. But uh, it's somewhere around February 17th, I think, is the uh, deadline for... Uh, for getting the orders in. I mean, it doesn't mean we're not going to have extras or not, but that gives us a good gauge on what we have to order. And then once our order goes to Lionel, they have a gauge of what they need to order. So it's very, very important that you order it. And with Train World, there's no deposit. You can cancel if you like. It's uh, if you cancel, I make more money. It's just as simple as that. It's just uh, there's always somebody out there looking to pay more for something that's hot item and uh, limited edition, without a doubt. But it's a uh, but uh, start checking off what you think you want and uh, get your orders in. Uh, so everybody down the food chain gets to, to get the right quantity out there for the guys that know about it and want it. And uh, the people that jump in the hobby later on in the year at Christmas time. You know, they kind of missed the boat by then. So now's the time. You guys got a, the first uh, heads up to get the orders in on this stuff. It's, yeah, uh, and, and on the, a lot of the hot items, hot items, the prices sometimes do go up. The uh, We buy from multiple places. So a lot of distributors, they all have different prices. So we, we may pay a higher price at, at different pl places. So uh, to, for, for great pricing, um, for the pre-order pricing, there is that deadline date that if you want to say it one more time, the yeah. general uh, time. Yeah, right, right around February 17th, uh, 19th, okay. right around there is when uh, our special pricing on high end is going to change. So okay. you definitely want to get in before that because uh, once our order is in, uh, Lionel won't take any orders until uh, you know they, they do their calculations and whatever. So it's a, uh, sometimes we got uh, room to get a little more, sometimes we don't. So, but our pricing, cer certain ones on the high end are definitely going to change after that. Yep. And uh, so, so that's <laughs> next week. So, so it's, yeah. it's close I, by. Yeah, Everybody... somebody, somebody wrote in no Valentine's <laughs> gift for my wife. That was yeah, funny. Yeah. I, I think he wants to train. I really do. <laughs> I, I am not responsible for that. Uh, to whoever that person's uh, lovely wife is, uh, I, yeah. I claim no responsibility for, for what's about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, we feel bad for you. Uh, so uh, <laughs> make sure you get her a little something. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. They have, women love Mickey yeah, Mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get her a Mickey Mouse hand car. I think that yep, would be there you go. red. It's very cute. <laughs> love, like, Mickey Mouse uh, all right. He's all set. David Jenkins, no wife, no worry. <laughs> I, I did see some questions in there, too, about the other colors of the Mickey Mouse hand cars. Uh, do just check out the, the link that's in the, the catalog and, and to, to Lionel.com. We have put some new things up 
uh, for some of the other different variations through uh, some of the Disney channels specifically mm -hmm. as they, they're getting things together. So, uh, and also for Disney 100 fans, you know, that's just getting started. So I'm sure mm -hmm. you will see some more fun announcements um, throughout the year uh, from us and everybody else who's, who's alive on Disney 100 this year. Uh, so yeah, keep, yeah, keep your eyes well. open on that. Oh, oh. That's Fox card did very well. What happens in two more years? Two more years is an even more important anniversary. Yes. Uh, that will be Lionel's 125th anniversary. Yeah. And yeah. we are already making plans. Wow. Wow. So I, that's I, what I, I'll allow to tell you, or Mike Phillips will have very unpleasant words for me uh, tomorrow yeah. morning. Yeah, guys that are listening, uh, write in and, and uh, to Lionel what you would like to see for a 125th anniversary type of an item. Uh, just to give them some uh, ideas and stuff, because I'm already thinking about what to make. Yeah, so we go from uh, Disney 100 and Warner Brothers 100 this year. Next year will be the uh, 20th anniversary year for a little movie called The Polar Express. Oh. Uh, that we've done a few products with over over a few, the, the past uh, 20 or so years. Uh, <laughs> so you might see some special product there. Then Lionel turns 125. And then 2026 will be 250 years for the U.S. of A. So, wow, we've got some pretty good years back to back to back to back here with some fun product that we've been uh, been dreaming up already. Mm -hmm. ah, it's going to be an exciting couple of years, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the train market is uh, cranking, cranking. We were at the Amherst show uh, last weekend. 20, 25,000 people went through there, all hobby people. These were not uh, stroller people with uh, kicking tires. These these were serious model railroaders in all scales, and everything was good. People were just talking more and more trains. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, without a doubt. And uh, just b before we start wrapping things up, uh, you could get all your Lionel trains at uh, trainworld.com. We are taking pre-orders on the entire catalog. And if you head over to our website, um, we even have a banner just for the Lionel section. But you could search by brand Lionel trains. You could also sort by catalog. And this catalog, 2023 C1, we're carrying the full line, 282 items. Pre-ordering wow. wow. is very simple. You just press pre-order, um, just leave a credit card on file, and then no money down. But when it does come in and we do ship it out, that's when we charge it. So it's very simple, easy to do, easy to use. Um, and we even have le legacy information, Line Chief Plus, uh, Lionel Fast Track. So we've really been uh, building out a lot of segments for Lionel to kind of help you and guide you. Um, Lionel has tons of great material for dealers that, that we, we like to use, um, even just curves on, on track. A, a lot of times people have questions, how many curves on track or different track pieces. Um, there's tons of videos that uh, Ryan and his team put together on all, all of this, uh, CW, 80s, uh, peel and sticks, clean your tracks, all these helpful tips. So we're, we're definitely uh, being a source for Lionel information. So if you have any questions, we have some real helpful links. But ag again, you could also break down by engine style. If you're looking for a specific engine style, if you're looking for road name, you could search if you're looking for only Union Pacific. Search Union Pacific, 18 items, Union Pacific. It's very simple to break it down because I, I tell you, the a catalog of 282 items, it's like, where do you start? Where where mm -hmm. do you look for? So you, you really need some uh, advanced navigation to kind of look for certain things. And if you're looking for uh, certain units, uh, legacy. So all the legacy units. So it's really helpful. Um, a lot of good stuff that you could narrow it down by. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Sr., you got anything else? Uh, yeah, you're doing a great job, Ken. And uh, thank you for doing this for the hobby. You know, uh, I wouldn't be the one doing it. I, I'm i not a uh, techie but uh, or a social media guy. But, uh, but uh, Ken, uh, you've been uh, a big asset for the whole industry, for everyone, not just for ourselves. And uh, 
you kind of like paved the way for a, a whole nother generation of young guys. When we go to the train show, all these people that come up and ask for you, it's amazing. Uh, thank God you're getting a lot of youth into this hobby. And uh -huh. um, it's uh, and Ryan doing these type of things and their videos. It's uh, it's like one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a great thing. You get to know people and uh, yeah, everybody likes to, uh, to do business with someone they know. So we try to get to know everybody. And uh, it's uh, Lionel's just made uh, 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 leaps and bounds of uh, what they've been doing. And uh, it's, uh, it's a great hobby. And uh, quite honestly, you guys are making so much good stuff. And I think you're going to start pulling certain people out of retirement, if you ask me. <laughs> you proved everybody wrong that uh, you can sell trains for uh, – high prices you know and it's and it's not that you're getting greedy or uh or trying to make more money it's just you know inflation everything goes up parts go up shipping goes up uh materials uh labor everything so it's uh you know it's just with everything in uh the economy everything's been going up and uh it's uh, but it's selling people are buying it like i can't believe how many big boys we sold can't believe it it's just uh I, I, I would have lost a bet if somebody wanted to bet with me how many it is uh, that I'd be able to sell. It's uh it's 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 number one in big stuff. Number one. Mm. Well, we're we're definitely doing all that we can to keep prices as as low as we can. And I know that sounds mm -hmm. ironic when you look at some of the prices uh, for for high end items, but uh, as you can see from the lavish appointment of my office behind me, uh, we we sink as much as we can into making <laughs> uh, making the indie products and not the not everything else, um, but it, it really is a, an ongoing challenge. And as you mentioned, the price of everything goes up. And, uh, and what we do, the products that we put together is a very unique uh, thing in the industry with all the, the different complexities that go into it from a production standpoint. So it makes my job um, very interesting and, and very challenging and, and very rewarding all at the same time. Yeah. So uh, I, got a, I got another question for you. Um, Chris uh, Rains mentioned that the uh, Challenger and that color scheme in the orange and the red is called the hot dog. Where did the <laughs> name hot dog come from? <laughs> uh, that's a that's a name that must have originated on the internet. Uh, oh, but, okay. uh, yeah, the, the ketchup and mustard train or the hot dog train. I don't care what you call it if you like it. That's that's all that matters. Um, you know, a lot of people really love it. Uh, and, some and of our fantasy schemes uh, have been. Well, they've all really actually been a, a bigger hit than I would ever have expected. Uh, but some some are more polarizing than others. That's one of the more polarizing ones. You either yeah. love it or you hate it. Uh, but it, we've sold quite a number of them, so a lot of people really do love it. Yeah. I called up to order uh, more of the green briars with the uh, orange uh, stripe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, John goes, oh, the creamsicle. creamsicle. <laughs> what, what, where did that name come from now? <laughs> Is that is that uh, an actual nickname for the engine, or uh, you know, I've heard I've heard some of them called that. I, I hear that uh, a lot with some of the, uh, the interstate heritage unit and things like that. I've had that name too, but okay. Uh, yeah. you know, some, sometimes these things just organically come up. Uh, but that would yeah. be a, those who saw that sample at Amherst that the uh, the Greenbrier is going to be a beautiful locomotive. Yeah. Okay. And another thing, not in the catalog, is the NASCAR anniversary box car. Yes. That uh, we already put our order in. The orders are still trickling in. It's an anniversary for NASCAR, and it's a very cool car. And uh, uh, for guys that don't know about it, just go to our uh, section of uh, uh, pre-orders, and you'll see the NASCAR box car in there. And uh, we don't have that many left to sell. So I'd have to check with Lionel if they got more, uh, if we start taking too many orders for sure. But on the big boys, just one final question. I don't know if you expected the amount of response that, you you're getting are you going to make to order or did you already order the parts and say this is all we're making no these will be built to order um okay. these will be built to order the factory had asked for a rough forecast and i gave them a rough forecast but said it may very well exceed my expectation yeah. um and uh, they will be a build to order model so whatever we get okay. orders for uh we will make sure that we have enough out there to to fill the bill Okay, great. That's all I want to know because my order is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suspected from the beginning that the number was going to be higher than a lot of the people who were worried about it had, had reason to worry over. Yeah, and I'm going to buy some extras. I'm going to put them away. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. And uh, my father uh, spoke some good words, so I, I might as well reciprocate back because I, I never say enough. But uh, Dad, I, I love you and thank you yeah. for everything uh, yeah. that you have done and, and trained me and uh, raised me. So I, I appreciate everything you've done for me. And and I, I truly say we're the one-two punch you go for the old school market. I go for the new school market. You, you, yeah. you're more tr traditional with the uh, the magazines and the old style, and uh, I, I'm more on the social media. So it, it it's uh, mm -hmm. a true, uh, truly unique dynamic where we're not uh, uh, so focused on one segment. So it, it yeah. it's a good team, and I, I appreciate that. And uh, that goes with our our whole family and uh, uh, coworkers. I, we're just so blessed with so many great uh, people who, who are with us. And uh, my, my cousin, Anthony, uh, who's uh, busting his butt uh, in, in the Brooklyn store and, and the entire family, uh, aunts, uncles, uh, cousins. It's just um, uh, we're very fortunate. And our, our, some of our employees have been with us for uh, it's got to be like 30, uh, 40 years now. So. Um, they've been from the the beginning with us, so we really appreciate everyone. And uh, and most of all, we couldn't have done it without all the customers and uh, people watching tonight and throughout the years. We really appreciate you and uh, all these names I, I recognize and uh, I, I know, so I appreciate uh, you, you chiming in. So thank you, everyone. We appreciate it. And and uh, on a, it all started with uh, Peter and Eileen Bianco, my mother and father, who just started by bought us a train set for christmas and one train set started this whole thing so it's uh it's a pretty cool uh family uh type of hobby without a doubt and uh i just want to always remember them because without uh without all, all of our parents none of this can happen so it's uh it's a it's a great hobby it's a great family hobby that's what it is mm. true and uh ryan thank you very much for uh joining us on live tonight you are always uh willing and able to to join us so we really appreciate it and the everybody out there appreciates it as well you're you're what you do with lionel is it's tremendous and we appreciate that and we know your your team over there has been excellent and uh and everyone there is just so helpful so we really appreciate it and you don't forget, get your pre-orders in for mm. the new Lionel catalog. Uh, very important. It's very helpful for Lionel and Train World and all dealers across the country. So get your orders in today. We appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.